There is a lot of water here. That sounds dumb, but a lot of people are asking for money. I don't know what that's about. Beer diversity here, so. What's up everyone? Today I wanna to talk about my first impressions of Sarajevo. The reason I want to do one on Sarajevo is not only do I think Sarajevo is extremely different than Trevigne, but the country of Bosnia and Herzegovina is a little complicated, should I say. And before I get into my first impressions of Sarajevo, I wanted to do a quick little more information about the country of Bosnia and Herzegovina. If you wanna skip ahead to my first first impression, please use the video chapters or skip to this time here. First of all, when you, when you hear the country's name, Bosnia and Herzegovina, it sounds like it's two countries, which I dug a little deeper into. And while there was no official Herzegovina in the past, there kind of is a loose border. So part of the country can be divided into what is or was Bosnia and what was Herzegovina. So that's that's one difference. But there are two, actually there are three entities that Bosnia and Herzegovina created or became after like the Dayton Accord. So after all the war stuff got, got settled, the country got split into three, but basically two entities. And those entities are the Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina, which that sounds like it makes sense because of the country name, and then the Republika Srpska. And the other complicated thing is it's not like a north-south line or east-west line. I'll show the image here, but that is kind of what you're working with. Okay, so my first, first impression probably isn't that surprising. So the first thing I realized or, or noticed here is Sarajevo is by far the largest city we've been to on this trip. So it is the first capital city we've been to. And on top of that, prior to coming to this country, the country of Montenegro, I believe, is only like 600,000 people total. So by large, I mean number of people in Sarajevo, but also just the geography of the city. It is much larger than everywhere. We've walked the furthest and it is just very large. That's probably not super surprising. And I kind of expected it, but Sarajevo is a, a, a very large city and the largest city we've been on so far this trip. So I talked kind of about a, a bit about the difference between like Bosnia and Herzegovina, Republika Srpska and Federation Bosnia and Herzegovina. It continues, and this was kind of a vibe we got in most of but much, much stronger here. There's very much an east-west vibe in Sarajevo. First of all, I think it's very cool, but Basically, you have like the Western part of the city that is very modern, very new, very metropolitan European. And then you cross a physical line that I believe is called the meeting of cultures. I'll, I'll show that here. And then you are in the quote unquote, quote unquote, East part and you feel it immediately. So from all these, think new buildings, malls, like the DM, the German drugstore. And then all of a sudden, all, instead of all these modern tall buildings, you have very low one or two story, much older buildings. Uh, instead of everyone just drinking kind of espressos and, 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 and doing their thing, all of a sudden you see people drinking Bosnian or Turkish coffee, you see people hookahing. Uh, there's a just dramatic shift. It is very, very, very cool in my opinion. And in addition to the East-West vibe, it's just more Eastern in my opinion than anywhere we've been. For sure, country-wise, Bosnia is more like kind of more Eastern or kind of leans heavier towards Turkey. But as a city, I think, Sarajevo, even more so than most are, is just, you get that Eastern vibe. So I didn't notice anywhere else in Bosnia Herzegovina, kind of like the baklava or dessert shops or the Turkish delight shops. I didn't really notice many people drinking Bosnian or Turkish coffee, whereas here it's everywhere. The hookahing, a lot of the stuff I mentioned earlier from like the East West line, but it is very much more Eastern influence and the Eastern part of the city here is very, very large and where a lot of the cool and fun stuff is, but you really just get that vibe. And Sarajevo is called the Jerusalem of Europe, the Jerusalem uh, of the Balkans. And you definitely just like kind of get that mixed vibe of kind of East meets West. I've never been to like Istanbul, but I, I imagine it'd be something like this. And then another cool thing uh, in this vein is I believe I read Sarajevo is one of the few places where a single neighborhood has an Orthodox church, a Catholic cathedral, a mosque, and a synagogue, and there's multiple of everything, and it's just super diverse and super cool. And the next thing, and I've been talking so much, I haven't even had my wine, so no beer this time. There is a lot of water here. That sounds dumb, but uh, 
there's been kind of like a river running through all the cities we've visited in Bosnia. Everywhere we visited in Croatia and Montenegro was on the coast. Here there are a ton of bridges, probably more than in Trebinje or Mostar, but it's not as pretty. The water is very muddy and brown, whereas the water in Mostar looks like the Adriatic Sea. It's gorgeous. And then in Trebinje, the water is still swimmable. People are jumping and swimming. No one is jumping into the, it's like Mekong River vibes. It is pretty to have bridges, but the water is, is not uh, photogenic at all. Maybe I should have thrown this into like the Eastern vibe or the East West vibe, but basically this whole trip, there hasn't really been panhandlers or beggars anywhere. The first time I noticed anyone asking for money was Mostar and it's like three or four people and it's in the heart of the touristy area. Also at the bus station, there was one guy the day we arrived and the day we left. But prior to that, like in Dubrovnik, I don't know if you've seen my other videos, a tour guide said there's like 30 homeless people in the city period, begging's illegal. In Montenegro, just don't think anyone was asking for money, period. Some people were like selling stuff, but no one's begging. In Trebinje, didn't see a single person. Again, most are a handful of people. Sarajevo, a lot of people are asking for money. And while I would probably think it is mostly in like the Eastern area, after today, when we were kind of outside of Old Town and we were at a park, people are just kind of asking for money everywhere. Just, just an impression, not like knocking it or anything. What I will say, having traveled to you know Asia and other places, people asking for money here, in my opinion, they're doing it for a job. They're not dirty. They have clean clothes. Like I've seen kids with like brand new backpacks or like women with night, not not like Louis Vuitton bag, but like you know they have a clean, nice purse asking for money. But this is the first place I've really noticed it. Most are barely, but here it's like, you probably are not gonna get through your day without four people asking you for money. And maybe I should have thrown this point earlier when I'm talking about Sarajevo being like such a big city. Because it's a capital, because it's such a larger city, I was expecting a lot more culinary diversity. So not just expecting hamburgers and pizza and pasta, cause that's kind of everywhere, but I don't know how to convey what I expected, but a lot of the restaurants are very similar to, to the rest of the trip. So there's chevap jinikas, if you wanna get chevapi, or like the patty or sausages. There's the burek jinikas, if you want cheese burek or spinach and cheese burek. There are a lot of places to get pasta or pizza or burgers. Um, another thing I've noticed, there's like a lot of, I wouldn't even call them Asian fusion. There's a lot of places with like wok dishes. So in the first few days, I was kind of, surprised at the lack of like diverse places but as we've been here longer yesterday we went to this crepe place which sounds weird but it was very good and very unique in my opinion and then today we went to a bosnian place but again we had like bosnian raviolis and like fried dough which is basically a donut but it's different and then this like soup so i think in the last few days my first so call it a second impression has changed but in the beginning I was like man everyone's just serving pasta and chivapi and pizza like what but as we've been here a little longer we've uncovered some gems on the flip side and this one might sound a little weird there is what I would call a lot more beer diversity here so in Trebinje there's actually a lot of beers from Banja Luka for whatever reason, so the main one being Nectar. When we went to Mostar, there was basically two, if not three beers available, and I'm blanking on one, but you basically could get the Mostar beer or the Sarajevo beer. So kind of two, I'm probably missing one, but basically those are the ones you could get. Now that we're in Sarajevo, not only can you get Sarajevsko because we're in Sarajevo, but they have, like, we've been to a bar and seen multiple bars that have like Estrella from Barcelona or, you know, Tuborg or, Amstel or Carlsberg, just whatever bar you're at, it might be anything on tap. And then there's a lot of bottled stuff. So I do think that has been an interesting impression that there's a lot of like beer choices, but again, capital city. So maybe that shouldn't be surprising. Good segue here. So the one thing I've noticed here that I have not noticed anywhere else is there are places you cannot purchase alcohol. And I mean that both at like a restaurant situation and a grocery store situation. So for the restaurant thing, I'm gonna assume maybe it's like a religious thing and places are choosing not to sell alcohol, which I can understand, even though I haven't seen it anywhere else, even where there's like, you know, heavy Muslim influence. What's weirder are 
Konsum or Konsum is like a Croatian chain that those are the grocery stores that we had in Mostar. They're the ones we have here. They're the ones we had in Croatia and parts of Montenegro. What is strange is the largest Konsum in the city doesn't sell alcohol. I don't know what that's about. And it's not even in Old Town. They, they had no wine. They only had 0% beer. And I had to walk through the entire store two times to like sanity check myself. And then by the time I finally found the beers that were non-alcoholic, I was like, oh, it must be intentional. Then when I asked the lady when we were checking out, she laughed and she's like, yeah, of course not. And it, it also wasn't a Sunday or anything. So I don't know what that's about. There are a lot of parks and green spaces here. And that's like my favorite thing about this city and about any city. Like I love green space, I love parks. We're very close to a park that is really nice, that has a cafe there, a lot of green space. There are a handful of other parks we've walked through and sat on like a park bench. And I just really enjoy like all the trees, all the greenery, all the parks. Not like a huge takeaway and it is a capital city, but I just love when places have parks and green spaces and it has made me enjoy the location of our Airbnb and it has made me feel like I would happily come back and spend more time in Sarajevo because of said parks and green spaces. And then this one's a weird one. I don't know how to convey this. The, the cafe culture seems different here than in Trevigne and Mostar. And what I think I mean by that is for sure when you go from the west part of town to the east side of town, the way the cafes work are, instead of them just being a line and everyone's facing the same direction, they kind of wrap around the building. So like kind of an L. So that's kind of interesting. And then the other thing are sometimes, because it's so hot here, they will be like out back in the shade and you'll be so far removed from the walking area. There's, there's a lot of options on cafes, I guess, is what I should say. But I think the cafes in most are in Trevigne. They seemed similar. And then when I got here, I was like, the cafes don't seem the same. It was a little different. With that said, we found a lot of cool cafes. And my favorite one would be Fabrica, also Ministry of Safe. There's a lot of good cafes here. So once you get here and walk around and have any idea what I'm talking about, the cafe culture being different, cafe culture is good. People are drinking coffee all day with their, uh, you know, Turkish delights or their baklava and We've had coffee probably more here than anywhere else on this trip. Myself for sure. And then didn't mean to end on like a somber or sad note, and maybe I'll throw this uh, next to the begging thing, but the troubled past is a more in your face here. So in Trevigny, I don't know historically, I don't, maybe it was like insulated and not as big a part of kind of like the war. In Mostar, there's like battle torn buildings and you see bullet holes and like, there's a lot of history there. But besides that, you're kind of like in the old town, the touristy area, everything's new and nice and you don't think about it. In Sarajevo, there's tons of museums here on like war crimes and crimes against humanity. The Sarajevo roses that are across the city, I don't know if there's seven or 13, I'll, I'll edit that here, are all across the city. And I originally thought they were symbolic of bloodshed, but they were actually like physical representation of shrapnel from bombs making marks in the ground uh, and they've kept these as symbols and, and what they call the Roses of Sarajevo. So it's very much more in your face. And I don't think that's good or bad. It's just something to be aware of. Those are, those are my takeaways. I talked a lot more than I thought I would. I guess I had a lot more impressions and feelings about here. I think that makes sense as I spent a week here versus a lot of the other places the first impressions were done after like two or three nights and we didn't stay as long. So I hope you enjoyed this. I would love any feedback on anything you thought I missed, anything, you're, anything you think I'm over-exaggerating about or just like having bad takes. Let me know what you think. I enjoy doing these, so would love to do these as we continue to visit new cities and countries. We'll be spending more time in Budapest and Prague, so I wanna do like my first impression, and then at the end of the month there, I wanna do like a how my impressions change after 30 days, but would love your feedback. As always, thanks so much for watching and supporting the channel. If you like this video, like, comment, and if you want to be seeing more of these videos and be a part of my journey, please subscribe. We'll see you soon.